Well, I've been raiding the cornfield, been pulling some corn, and we have got some beautiful, beautiful corn. Look at that. That is Honey Select. Came from Hoss Tools. No earworm damage at all. That's beautiful. Filled out all the way to the end. These are those two rows that I hand pollinated. I told you I was going to show you <laughs> if it worked. I hand pollinated those two rows with uh, with uh, getting pollen from the tassel and uh, a makeup brush and just dabbing the pollen on them. Not all of them are like that. You got one like this, but I tell you what, I'll take that every day. That is not bad at all. Very, very little earworm damage. I uh, I used, um, early on, I used some seven spray just right on the, um, I know some of y'all freaked out because I used seven, but I used seven spray on uh, just on the silks, didn't spray the entire corn. And um, look at that, how beautiful that is. And then I used um, some um, pyro, pyro, I can't remember if it was permethrin or pymethrin, but it's a, it's a lesser toxic um, version. And I mean, that's beautiful. You know, could it have filled out a little further? Well, I, I might could have left it a little longer and maybe it would have, but I don't think so. I think it's done all it's gonna do. Um, but I used the pyrethrin and there again, I used a, a makeup brush I'm putting these in the front end loader so I can just dump them in the uh, dump them in the compost pile and and or in the feed dish of the cows and let them eat these these uh, husks. Um, got a little brush in the house. We'll get those silks off a little better. But look at that! I mean, that's a beautiful ear of corn. Again, pollinated by hand. Yes, on two rows of corn. Pollination by hand works. I'm gonna have an earworm here in a minute probably. I'll show you. May not. I've had about, we put up, this is just kind of some of the last. I probably got another uh, maybe dozen ears out there that um, that are already or will be in the next few days. I, you know, I, some of the silks, uh, begin to mature some of the silks begin to show much later than the other ones so it makes the corn a little later than the, the first ones that begin to silk and uh, so I don't know you know they could be that if I let it go too long then the, the corn gets inedible uh, it just gets tough I had some last year that was just so tough I couldn't eat it I just gave it to the chickens now see that one didn't pollen didn't pollinate or in my opinion didn't pollinate all the way out but is it ready man yeah oh that's good and it's that gum it's almost lunchtime it's 10 till 12. Well, that one won't go in the freezer <laughs> for sure. I'll take it to the house and finish it. Mmm, that's good. Honey Select Sweet Corn. It's a triple sweet corn. Now, how do you tell it's ripe? And I have, I struggle with this too. And last year, that's the reason I I let them get too. Uh, too mature, I let them stay on the uh, stay too long before I pick them. Is because I was afraid they wouldn't ripe. I was waiting for those silks to completely, completely die and be dead and all that stuff. Well, that's perfect. I mean, you just don't get much better than that. Got a few places down here that didn't fill out exactly right, but you know, I'll take that all day long. So, how do you tell if it's how do you tell if it's ready to pick? First of all, I I think it's trial and error. You feel of it, and I can feel where it comes down to that point. That point, I can feel right about there, okay? But it feels pretty filled out, pretty solid 
all the way and then it just kind of collapses to a point like that and then it comes down to a point if you feel if if when you're touching it now we're talking about in the field before you pull it if you're touching it and it and way close to the end it starts to taper down starts to come down to a point then it's probably either either not ready or it's like one of these you know that has a little bit more that didn't fill out but if you <clears throat> if your silks are dead and that's the first first sign silks are dead now they're a little green right here on the ends right here and that's what threw me in the past was having those green silks there and I thought well they're not completely dead so I'm gonna wait and I waited and waited and waited and I waited too long the earworms tore them up the uh, that, yum that's a pretty ear <laughs> the earworms tore them up and uh, and the corn what corn I got out of it I did a video on last year where I just gave most all of it to the chickens and then wound up freezing it and pulling out of the freezer and trying to cook it and I just it, it just inedible I, I let it go too long my fault but look at that see it just comes down tapers down to here and then just collapses that's when you feel feeling of it on the outside out in the field feeling of it and that's the way it feels like it's pretty full all the way down to the end then you'll know it's uh it's time especially especially if those silks if those silks are dead on the ends don't wait or i didn't I, i'm not gonna wait until they're you know dead way down in here if they're if they're pretty dead here and if it feels full all the way down till you get to the end you can see where i'm pinching it that's where it feels it's just collapsing there on the end so this corner is going to be filled out to right here and it's going to drop down to that white see and it's just kind of just try two or three ears feel of it test it um see what you think it's going to look like before you pull it if you get that feeling that it's going to be going to look like this then go ahead and pull it shuck it right there and just kind of do trial and error to where you you finally get to know what the corn's supposed to feel like before you pull it some corn may be a little different some corn may may not be as round you know may 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 taper a little bit more toward the end and still be ripe i don't know but man i tell you what <laughs> That is beautiful. I gotta go down and buy me some more, some more bags, freezer bags. We used to freeze these and have in the past and liked it. Uh, freeze these just in the shuck, just didn't do anything to them. But then I got started having a lot of earworm damage stuff, so I got to where I wanted to see if the corn had earworms on it before I, before I put it in the freezer and then uh, six months from now bring it in the house to cook and you cook it and you're cooking no earworm too, so. We've decided the, the, our preference is to go ahead and shuck it. <clears throat> we just put it in freezer bags. We don't parboil it um, we, or anything. We just put it straight in the freezer bag and cut off. I'll cut off the end there. Don't have to, but I'll cut off the end just to make it blunt. Kind of helps fit in the freezer bag a little better. And I got one more again. Now this one. It feels the same way. It feels filled out all the way to just the end. And then you pinch down on it. The silk, that's the old silk I threw on top of it just now. Somebody else's, somebody else's silk. Uh, but the silk is dead. Little bit of green on the silk right where it goes into the uh, the husk. But I guarantee you that's going to be a good one. I've just gotten good at that feeling of it, you know. And... Um, that's a good one. Break it off. Try to get the silks off. We've got a brush in the house where you can run a, a vegetable brush, run it down it backwards from top to bottom, and it'll pull a lot of that silk out. Now that I've had so much earworm, earworm problems, I like to see the corn before I put it. I like to see the ear, see what I've got before I put it in the freezer. So anyway, that is beautiful, beautiful corn. We have picked uh, maybe 30 ears. I'll show you what they look like in the freezer bags. And um, this is close to the end. Again, just two rows, 50 feet long. So we're gonna get 30, that's 40. We'll probably get 50, uh, 50 ears. Some of them are short. Uh, the ones I haven't picked yet are the shorter ones that matured a little late. And it could be they don't 
they, they don't produce, I mean, they don't fill out as well. They don't poll uh, pollinate as well. Anyway, just want to show you corn, the Honey Select from House Tools. Um, if you would, uh, if you want to go look at some seed, go to House Tools. Uh, use my associate link below if you would. I would appreciate that. It uh, does two things. It helps the channel because it does provide a little bit of, of income does at no cost to you but it provides a little bit of income from me sending people to Haas but it also lets Haas know that people are interested in their product f through my channel that that their that their um, uh, sponsorship of me is not in vain that they're uh, getting something out of their uh, sponsorship so if you would use my associate link that is below and I would appreciate that but Haas is the best has the best seeds I have seen uh, they've got a huge variety next year I'm gonna plant there's something they just came out with called a these these are triple sweet and I've got another patch of corn behind the barn that is uh, a week two weeks maybe from ripening that is the primus it's a triple sweet and I've got a little bit of a peaches and cream back there which is a triple sweet but next year I'm gonna plant the quadruple sweet whatever it's got a quad quadruple sweet I think they call it not a, it's not a GMO but it is a hybrid uh, but anyway this is a shoot I am just I, my corn crop this year best I've ever grown I attribute that to the seed from Haas to my hand pollination I think that helped a lot watch that video if you've got just a small amount of corn watch that video on hand pollination uh, treating for earworms and yes I used seven once or twice uh, and and some better stuff once or twice treating for earworms and using that house uh, 2020 20 in the very beginning whenever they were small and then once they get up big I start fertilize, fertilizing with Chilean nitrate it's it's some hot stuff 1502 and that's what you need on your corn once you get it up to about uh, I don't know probably uh, ankle high certainly calf high then start putting that Chilean nitrate to it. And there's some other stuff you can do it. The micro boost. I love, love, love the micro boost. But uh, the micro boost, the Chilean nitrate, the 20-20-20, uh, best garden I've ever grown. I told you that the other day. Best corn I've ever grown. And that, I am a cornaholic. I love me some corn. So anyway, that's uh, that's it. Wanted to show you peeling some of this, shucking it, shucking the corn. We've been shucking the corn around here, and uh, hope you are doing as well in your garden as mine is doing. If you're not, look below to the house link and uh, order some stuff from them. They have got everything you need to grow a good garden. All right, corn, we got it going on, and we're gone.